Ball teed up. Brandon Aubrey after the kick. And here we go from AT&T Stadium. He fields it from the eight. And this will give them decent field position. The return gets out to the 30. So the Saints offense taking over for the first time here. And then brought out by the second rounder who's been climbing the leaderboard since 2014 at a Fresno State, Derek Carr. Well, it was another very statistically productive season down in New Orleans for Derek Carr a season ago. Another 25 touchdowns, almost 4,000 yards. And what I love about this guy is he is remarkably durable. He's played 15 plus games all 10 seasons that he's been a starter in this league. That's called the ability of durability to be there for you guys. Now, the next step in New Orleans is to take this franchise to the playoffs. Tight end reels in the shallow throw. And this one's brought to a halt at about the 36-yard line. After a good pickup, they've got second and four. This is Alvin Kamara with it. And he's going to go down right along the midfield strike. They gain 14 on the play. And the Saints are going to have a first down. Kate, I know you can see that smile on my face as we stand next to each other. Sure, I love that run. But I'm thinking about some great running backs. In fact, Corey Dillon, who created a lot of negative grades on my play sheet because I didn't want to carry out no fake. I wanted to watch the damage he could do like we just saw. This is complete to Olave. And a solid gain there. Gets him across the 45 before he goes out. Second and three now. On the shotgun, Cobb. This is reeled in by Camaro. And he's tackled with the first down yardage. You know, you compare and contrast stats over the decades, Kate. One thing you see is the completion percentages are through the roof. In this day and age, compared to the 60s and the 70s, a big reason is just completions like that. Utilizing every one of your eligible receivers that time, a running back in the flat. Car with it on first. Here's a throw on the out route, complete. And he's out of bounds, just short of the 30. Hey, Kate, you know this from covering the Seahawks calling the preseason game when Pete Carroll was there. If he said it once, he said it 100 times. Stay on top, stay on top, stay on top. You'll give up a short little out route like that, but just stay on top of the deep threat. Now they send their back in motion right. Going again, it's Carr. Here comes the wide receiver screen. And the defense gets there to force a small loss. You call that receiver screen, and every once in a while, that wide receiver, well, he's got to be his own blocker. He's got to make the first guy or two miss. That didn't happen. Play goes nowhere. Let's see what they draw up on a third and seven. Car here from the gun. He finds Johnson. And that tackle stops him after a solid game. You can earn your money in the NFL in all sorts of different ways, but defensively, in a league where you're just not hitting as much in training camp, you're not tackling as much as they got to in the old days, when you can make a play in the open field, keep it short like that, I promise you some money will follow. And that one is good. A little longer, but no problem at all. And the opening drive of the game ends in three points. You'd expect him to make most of those attempts from this distance, but it's never a lock. So they'll happily take this and finish off the drive with points.
Bringing them out is a Mississippi State fourth round pick in 2016 who's found considerable success in this league, Dak Prescott. I don't think I'm alone in this, Kate. To me, Dak is one of the easiest players to root for their success in the NFL. I think for me and for many others, it's based on all he's overcome from tough playoff losses to significant injuries. But his leadership, his stats, his ability to play like an MVP in big moments, at his best, he really is all you could ever ask for. And he's going to get this up to the 45 before he's brought down. We'll get a stoppage now. Looks like we have someone banged up after that run in need of some attention. Second and six coming up here. Dak off the play fake. Oh, on him quick there. They bring him to the turf. And that pushes him back. Third down coming up. All right, first sack on the board on the first drive as a defense. And now, well, now we let the chess match begin. The adjustments begin because we know pressure leads to sacks. And sacks in this league often leads to wins. Got to figure out this third down here. Dak now from the gun. Escapes the pocket. Oh, he's going to run for it. It's out of harm's way after stringing together some nice yards on that run. That is quarterback play 101. Maybe not the first chapter of it, but man, is that important. Getting downfield, get what you can with your legs, then most importantly, protect yourself. Get down and don't take any extra contact. Cowboys putting it away here on fourth, and it's the longtime vet Brian Anger on now. And they bring him down to put a stop to that return. Officially a 55-yard launch. And the Saints will get set to take over. Ready to begin this drive. First and ten. Card of the air now. That one is caught. Left side of the field. And they catch up to him, but not until he's got a huge gain and a first down. Give him 24 on that play. And that's good for a New Orleans first down. The analytics will tell you a handful of these kind of plays per game and your odds per drive of scoring go way up. Running right, it's Kamara. And they've got him behind the line for a big loss. These stops, they don't always make the end of game highlight reels, but they absolutely should. The coaches and players know it. Offenses are always counting on yards on that type of run. And any time it results in a loss, it could be a potential drive killer. Second and 13. And oh, someone stepped in. It's intercepted. Trey Vaughn Diggs has got it. And forget the interception. He makes this a pick six touchdown. Well, we all know getting the interception is the important thing, Brock. But how about this guy having the wherewithal to transition into a really nice return to then get the touchdown out of it, too. Yeah, that's a great point. We talk about it with receivers, right, getting vertical right away after making uh -huh. a catch. Uh -huh. Same thing for these defenders when they make a pick. They secure the football, sure, but instantly they go back to their offensive days. They want that touchdown, and they want a moment they won't forget. Brandon Aubrey now on for the extra point. That one splits the uprights. And they'll continue adding to their lead.
quick chance at redemption after that pick six as it's sent away. To return this, Rashid Shaheen. And a decent return ends as they bring him down inside the 30. The Saints come marching onto the field. It's a group really hoped he was going to get it all right there. Reset it back to first down. But instead, the defense, well, they're not going to let anything come easy. And their fight is giving them a chance to stall things out. And throw them short. Battle coming up on third and inches. Throwing his car. That's caught for the first. And a solid gain there. Gets him across the 45 before he goes out. Call it seven yards on the play, and that's enough for the first down. Here's a give inside to Camaro. And he's charged towards the line. It's right around three yards. Hey, not a bad play by any means, but there's room for more, and they know it. Second down now, seven to go. Another run for Camara. And that's good yardage with a new set of downs. You spring a big game like that, Kate, on the interior. Nine times out of ten, that O-line decisively won their matchup with the big fellas up front. They got those pads down. They created leverage, and they opened up that running lane. Set up now, first and ten. They stay on the ground with Camara. And he'll get it down to the 24-yard line. Give him five on that carry, bringing up second and five. Okay, this is why coaches across all levels of football hope on the importance of good fundamental tackling, not just to hear themselves talk. Uh-uh, it's to make sure that when one of their guys has a chance to bring down a running back, able to do it and keep those plays from going any further. And now headed right, Camaro. And he's caught behind the line for a loss. What was supposed to move the chains or at least make third down easier to handle instead? It did the exact opposite here, Kate. Now makes this third down a whole lot trickier to figure out. Let's see what they draw up on these third and seven. The smartest pass catchers I've ever been around, they know how to set up an outcut beautifully. They recognize when they have leverage, how to sell the deep route, and then boom, they just break it out as if it's nothing. To the line we go. They're set, first and ten. Come here, running out of the gun. 
this count play nets in five it's going to be second and five this is a guy who man when he is in a group when he is feeling it you're just not going to bring him down with an arm tackle you better buckle up you need a textbook tackle on this guy whack grab some cloth and drive him to the ground with all you got run here with camara and he only gets this one down to the nine they made it to single yard that time. They're going to have to solve third down and four. Motion in left is their running back. Carl with it on third and short. successfully Brock you need the perfect throw just the right touch and you also need a guy who can go up and get it just like that yeah need to be able to muscle somebody off the ball if you're not alone and call me a little bias go ahead I don't care <laughs> you're biased. But the success of that play does come down to the timing of the throw uh, Kate. Uh -huh. if you don't throw it on time to that exact spot you run out of room and so we've got a stoppage now figured this might be coming we're gonna take another look to see if this was indeed a touchdown at least right here is where having all those camera angles comes into play. We're going to get a much clearer picture thanks to all the shots we've got. Yep, technology, everybody's friend right now. We get to watch it again and again. Unlike these officials, we got to see it once in real time. We just have to see, is there clear enough evidence to overturn the call that was made down there on the field? No change to the call on the field. So that play is going to remain a touchdown. Blake Groupie to try the extra point. That one right down the middle. And they'll continue adding to their lead. kickoff team to tee it up and send it away. Short kick here, fielded at the 15. And stopped on the return at the 27. Now after that return, we've got an injured player getting some assistance as we momentarily step aside. They're out and set. First and ten. Here's Prescott. Ferguson there to bring it in. And he's up to the 35-yard line as they reel him in. We will not get another play in here. That's going to do it for quarter number one. Scoreboard shows 10-7. Back to AT&T Stadium in just a moment. Second quarter all set to begin, and it'll be Cowboys football. They're looking at second and pretty short. Dak out of the pistol. This one caught by C.D. Lamb. And he's brought down after a nice gain and a first down. First down, here's Dak. And they finally bring him down, but that is a big gain and a new set of downs. It's a massive 35-yard pickup. First down. 
One thing we don't have in football is we don't have that radar gun. But if we did, Kate, this is the kind of throw when you throw it that deep outside the numbers that requires a serious fastball, serious arm strength, and he just showed it off. That last shot took him right down to the front of the red zone. Here's first down. Elliott straight ahead. And the power play up the gut only results in two yards. You know, Kate, I like to call these body blows. Body blows. you got to be committed to running the football. Even if it doesn't move the chains, I guarantee you that wear and tear will pay dividends later. Eight yards to go. Well, let's see how they approach this second down. Play action, Prescott. partner what do you think was that a design read or did he just see space and he was reacting more on the old quarterback instinct there yes <laughs> <laughs> i think yes on both of them and that play happens so fast that it really is instincts on both sides for the point after here's aubrey that one splits the uprights and they'll continue adding to their lead now to kick this one away. That's going to be taken in at the 8. Coverage team gets him down to the 26-yard line. This offense and their quarterback making their way back out there, ready to take over once again. And I think they'd be content doing everything the same as their prior drive and getting another touchdown here. Drive starting first and ten. Now Carr. That's complete to Camaro. And he won't salvage that. It's a loss on the play. Well, if they were concerned about losing yards, running it on first down, it just happened anyway. Not many passes end in the loss. Hopefully they got a little more aggressive strategy coming here on second down to the line for second down. Working out of the gun. It's called. He'll dump this one off to his running back complete. And that will not be enough for a first down. You know, Kate, it is so hard on these defenses to try to keep an eye and monitor on these running backs when they leave the backfield. Especially if he's waiting to chip a defender or delays from the start of his route. He's really an underrated part of their overall passing game. Time throwing on third. Into the hands of Olave. And he goes out close to that 45-yard line. That play gains 15, and it moves the sticks. It was such a privilege for me to watch Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne in person in Indianapolis do their work. Daryl Jackson out in Seattle. They showed how great a deep out is as a chain-moving play. It's all about getting that leverage at the top of the route and then exploiting the leverage as that ball arrives on time downfield. Car now on first and ten. Quick hitter complete. And he'll be taken down, but not until he reaches that 45-yard line. Give him 11 yards, Brock, and a fresh set of downs. Ball on the 45, first and 10. Going again, it's...
everyone's prepped. It's second down now. One of the tight ends motioning right. After the sack, another pass on second down. Short pass caught by his tight end. Decent game here, but short of the first. They come to the line here, and this is third and six. Car here from the gun. He has the first over the middle. And they get this down to the 28. It's a 13-yard play, and that's enough for the first. I'm not sure how this defense let that guy slip through him like that. On third down, nonetheless. He took that snap as an opportunity. Man, did he make an impact play. Up to the line, and they're set. First and ten. From the shotgun, Kong. Tight end reels in the shallow throw. And he's stopped just before he reaches the red zone at the 21. Second and three now. From the 21. Step drop. I've seen a three, a five, a seven. Some of the boots and play actions get more depth, but a 20 step drop? <laughs> That's not going to cut it, except for this defense. It just adds a whole bunch of negative yards to that play. times, Kate, where I got to put my glasses on up in the booth and realize the line between receiver and tight end is so easily blurred. Why? Because this guy can run. He showed it before the catch with a great route, and he showed it even more so with the yards after catch. First down from the red zone. And he will score. It's a New Orleans touchdown. The Saints take a second quarter lead. So Brock, good work there to finish off the drive in the end zone and retake the lead. You just get this feeling every once in a while in games, this sucker's going to be a back-and-forth football game. So what a great job offensively to jump out in front here in the first half of play. Groupie to try the point after. That one right down the middle. And they'll continue adding to their lead. Turn starts from the 16. And great starting field position here as they bring him down beyond the 40. This offense headed back to the field led by their receiver. When you get contributions like that out of your kickoff returner, it is such a boost to an offense. This is about showing no fear. 
Hit the lane hard. A determined run back and setting your offense up with great field position. The Cowboys have it in great field position as they come up to the line first and ten. This drive will begin with a run from Elliott. And the plunge up the gut yields nothing there. No progress on first down, and that'll bring up second and ten. You know, Kate, over the years, I've heard running backs say, there's just times you got to run in the darkness. And when linebackers fill that hole like that right in the middle of the field, he ran right into the darkness and the pain of that linebacker. Dak now from the gun. That'll be complete to Elliott. And he has it up towards midfield before he's taken down at the 47. It is so hard for these defenses. I don't envy them at all to try to monitor where these running backs are. Are they chipping? Are they delaying their route? He's such an underrated part of their overall passing game. Third and four coming up now. Prescott here from the gun. Catch made by Cooks. And they'll get him down after he gets him to the 48. Pick up a five on that play. And it'll be first down, Dallas. There's no question the greatest concern there was just getting the first down. You want a high percentage throw, and you're not really concerned about big yards. Well, the drag route was perfect. He comes open in the short field. It's easy to zip that throw right in there and reset those chains. And he finds the seam down the middle complete. And they catch up to him, but not until he's got a huge gain and a first down. A big play, 23 yards to move those chains. Well, that is a well-designed wrap right there. He really made it easy to get that pass to him. Creating space, QB receiver, deliver. They'll keep this drive moving and come to the line for first and ten. Dak off the play fake. And his perfect start is over. And that's the first one of his throws to wind up incomplete. I think we're starting to get a feel, aren't we, of why they like him so much in coverage. He reacts well to throws, is super adept at breaking up passes through contact, or like that one before they could ever reach the target. Death throwing again. That's incomplete for the moment. We do have a flag down, but it might not be good news for their offense. That's usually where we see holding calls. He got a major fistful of jersey on that play, and it's going to end up costing him. Another throw for Prescott. It was there, but he couldn't hang on. That's incomplete. That's one he knows he should have had. So they're left facing third and long. That drop ruins the payoff to a well-designed play. It got a man open and beat the coverage. That's a call they can revisit in the future with hopefully a much better job finishing the catch. Here he is on third and long. And he'll go down. The Saints make the play. And the defense comes through. That's going to back him up and bring up fourth down. That sure ended up being a worst-case scenario. Pass rush just kept coming and coming and bearing down. And he was looking for an escape that wasn't there. It's just one of those plays in hindsight, Kate, where you really got to understand, I got to cut bait, cut my losses, and avoid such a negative play. What's the two-minute warning from AT&T? The Cowboys with the football. So from a mile away, they'll send out the field goal unit to take a shot at this one. This from the right hash and a considerable distance. Hey, listen, I know kickers are arguably better today than they've ever been in the history of football. But anything from 60 plus is still awfully ambitious. And that time, it didn't pan out. Football on that 47-yard line, first down. Yeah. 
Pistol snap to Carr. Connects with Johnson. And they finally bring him down, but that is a big gain and a new set of downs. It's a 33-yard gain and a fresh set of downs. Just excellent effort on that catch and a lightning quick transition from bringing that football in to getting vertical. He was not content for a second to end that play where he caught it. Uh -uh. Any catch he makes, his intent is to put some serious yards on top of it. Into the red zone after that big pickup. It's first and 10 from the 15. Working inside the red zone. Gets it towards the end zone, but it's incomplete. You know, as a QB, I'm going to note that in the back of my head. That was a heck of a break. Knocks the ball away. DBs like that, they tend to, once they get one hand on the ball, have a pretty good beat on you and can get two hands on it the next time. So after the incompletion, here comes the second down call. Back to the air. Carr. Now set up the screen. And a nice game here, but it stopped short of the first. Well, this is the type of game we've come to expect from him as a runner, toting the ball, but he's just as adept at turning the screen into the same kind of yardage, too. So before third down, whistles, and yep, the timeout comes in. They'll have two left to work with before halftime. And the Cowboys bringing on an extra DB here. Third down coming. It's coming, Carr. Complete beyond the marker. And he'll pick up enough to move the chains. This offense in position now. It's first and goal. Here's Carr. his third touchdown catch certainly enough to call this a very good game for him and we're still in the opening half so what else might he accomplish before we're done here groupie to try the point after that one splits the uprights and they'll continue adding to their lead is the Saints kickoff team to tee it up and send it away. This short fielded at the 20. They'll have decent field position to begin with here. Rocky's tackle just beyond that 30-yard line. The Cowboys are ready to go on offense a final time in this first half. They'll have to be quick about anything they want to do here. We're just moments away from halftime. Nineteen seconds remain in our opening half. Let's see what they do with it. First down, here's Dak. He's got it, room to run. And he'll get up near the 38 yard line before going down. Now we're going to get an offensive timeout. So that's their first. They'll have two left to work with before halftime. Second and three now. Working out of the gun, it's Prescott. And that is incomplete. Eight seconds left now. This is why we hear about closing speed so often when you evaluate players. You know, once he senses the pressure, he's getting rid of that ball. 
It takes a player who can close quickly to get to him before it's released and alter that throw. No connection on the last play, and out's third down. Looking to throw. And that's incomplete, and it also stops the clock with just five seconds left. No luck finding his receiver that time. And that will bring up fourth and three. You know, these third and short situations, you rep them all the time. Snap after snap, rep after rep. You're expecting man-to-man -man coverage in that down and distance, and you're expecting to execute. A time on third and short, you can't get the job done. where Jonathan Coachman is waiting to bring you the EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, what you got for us? All right, Kate, thanks very much. Back to you and Brock in a bit. But first, time for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Both of these offenses had their share of high points in that first half. Each team had some big moments, and it would seem this could turn out to be a game where the last score wins. As always, a hat tip to Coach for his hard work during the break, because we're happy to welcome you all back for the start of our third quarter. is the Saints kickoff team to tee it up and send it away. Fielded at the 14. Coverage team gets him down at the 26-yard line. Dallas with its offense headed out for our first possession of the half. And they're going to try to take the lead back to one possession here after that last score pushed it up to 24-14. The drive will start out with a first and ten. Off the play fake, it's Prescott. He beams one deep right side. He makes the catch. And he breaks into enemy territory before being stopped on a huge game. You know, Kate, we often talk about flipping the field in special teams, right? A, a kick return, a good punt. Well, an explosive play like that does the exact same thing. Look at the difference in field position. By hitting on that shot, you've totally flipped the field and the tone of this drive. He brings the offense up now for a first and ten. They run it from the gun with Elliott. And the defense is all over this one for a big loss. You know, Kate, during draft season, I was talking to an NFL GM, and he said, you know what, in time, we're going to realize tackles for loss are just as big a deal as sacks. Sacks get so much of the popularity. Tackles for loss, when you knock that offense backwards, I promise you, in time, we'll be keeping a closer eye on plays like that one. And he's down inside the red zone before hitting the deck. I can't tell you how nice it is to have a big, trustworthy tight end in the passing game. Such great size to have and he forces those defenses to find a way to try to match up when they can't. All plays on the table here for third and three. Trying an inside give to Elliott. And he's tackled for no gain. Just short on third down, no gain on the run. And now what will they do on fourth? Made it all look so simple, didn't he? That linebacker sorting right through the traffic, finding the runner. That's instincts come to life. Now Brandon Aubrey will try to knock it through for the Cowboys. It's a 38-yarder from the left hash. And it is good. No problems there on the shorter attempt. And that'll bring it back to within a score. The lead seven. Here in the third quarter, he gets a chance to make up for the miss on his first attempt of the game. This time, well, he is totally dialed in, and he gets this one to count. And just like that, we're back to a one-possession ball game as the kickoff is away. Has this at the six. 
He stopped on the return at the 27. Ready to begin this drive. First and ten. Working out of the gun. It's caught. That's complete to Camaro. And he's down after getting this up to the 41. Big game. 14 on the play. And the Saints are going to have a first down. Okay, I know exactly what's going to happen. I've seen it once. I've seen it a hundred times. <laughs> Next week on the practice field, this running back's going to say, see, I'm not just a running back. I can play receiver. And you receivers, you couldn't do my job. And I just showed you I could do yours. The flag's down as he stops. Looks like this one's on the offense. Fighting all he could to keep his quarterback upright, but cross the line there. That earns the holding penalty. They'll run here, following the penalty. Has a lane past the 45. And he's going to get all the way up to the midfield strike. i got to really rack my brain, Kate, to remember a play, a run in this league that nice. It doesn't end up getting an offensive first down. He did all he could to wheel this drive forward. Nice spot here for the offense. It's second and one. Running behind center with Camaro. And he's going to get stopped right around the 45-yard line. They'll see he got five there, but Brock, all they care about is the first down that comes with it. Well, Looky here. You don't even have to worry now about a third down call as that run moves the sticks. Now that call you had ready, though, you recycle it. Save it for later for that next third down coming. Car now on first and ten. It is caught. Left side. And he's brought down after pushing to that 35-yard line. That's an 11-yard pickup, and it gives them the first down. They're set up at the 35 now. Williams now on first and 10. And they love to see him fighting forward, but he only gets him three. That's the kind of run play that feels like tug of war at field day. <laughs> and you're just not moving the other side. Just a short run. Neither side feels particularly good about it. And we'll move to the next. Second down now. Seven to go. From the 32. Camara's got it. They come through with a nice gain there. Gain of 10, first down. Some certainly do it better than others, Kate, but every running back in the league today has got to do just that. You cannot be a one-dimensional back in the league anymore. You can't. you got to be able to handle your business, both token ball as a runner, and really importantly, as a check-down outlet on short throws. Going on first down. It's called. Got a man over the middle. Complete. And he's going to be taken down near the 8-yard line. 14 yards on a nice play there, and it gives him first and goal. Year after year, the best offenses are multifaceted. It's not just the receivers or the tight ends that can make plays through the air. When you get running backs that can attack the middle of the field like that, man, it's difficult on the defense. Four downs now to get in. Here's first and goal. Second chance at six here. It's second and goal. Going again. It's Carr. No one opens. He chucks this to another county. A 
And this is why scouts talk about a player's closing speed, Kate. You know, once he senses the pressure, he's getting rid of that ball. It takes a player who can close quickly to get to him before it's released. I'm not sure altered the throw. Buckle up. It's third and goal. Carn here from the gun. And he will score as a goal. It's touchdown. The Saints push their lead further to start the half. You always tell me, Rocket is a whole different world here. Running routes, working in confined spaces, instead of having that whole field to spread out a defense. Oh, spot on, Kate. And some players, that's the world they thrive in. Finding windows where windows shouldn't exist and then being ready for the throw to arrive. It happens so fast. Trusting your quarterback to make the right read and get it to you. Group B to try that point after. That one right down the middle. And they'll continue adding to their lead. is the Saints kickoff team to tee it up and send it away. On the return, here's Rico Dowdle. Coverage team tracks him down as the return reaches the 35. The offense returning to the field now as we get a look at their wideouts. The Cowboys have it in great field position as they come up to the line, first and ten. Play action, Prescott. Well, the pressure nearly got to him, but still a good play defensively as that one falls incomplete. No dice on that prior pass. Here's second down. Throwing again is dead. Passing is rolled in by the running back. And they push this down to the opposing 47 yard line. Give him 18 yards on that play, Brock, and it gets him a first down. Simply part of the job description for any running back in today's game. You're out there, you're going to be one of your quarterback's most important safety valves. And you've got to be ready for that check down at all times. Football on that 47 yard line, first down. Now Dak to throw. This finds Cooks complete. And they make the stop. We're going to say it about the 37-yard line. Nice spot here for the offense. It's second and one. Another throw for Prescott. No hesitation, and that one's caught. And he takes it across the 30 before heading out. He manages a gain of eight there. And that's good for a Cowboys first down. Elliott running out of the gun. And he powers through the middle for a gain of four. You know, that's a good one right there. Keep the offense on schedule. If he can average that type of yards per carry, this guy's going to be more than all right with letting him lead the show. Second and six coming up here. Dak now from the gun. Hits his man on the out routes. And he's going to be out of bounds right along the 20.
Third down, one yard to go. Here's Zeke on the carry. And he gets this forward to the 19. A gain of a low yard, but Brock, that's all they needed. First down. You love a huddle? Okay, you really do. You love a huddle full of guys like this who just know how to keep the drive moving forward. There's some trust there. He's going to get the job done, and he's going to get another shot, I would guess, down the line. Throwing on first is Prescott. Makes the catch, but does not do it in bounds. It looks like he came down on that sideline. Second down coming up. The best of the best, they just have this intuition, Kate. They know where the boundary is without looking. This receiver's not quite at that level yet. He lost track of where he was, and he brought it in, but out of bounds. On the toss, here's Elliott. And he'll have a short pickup down to the 17. Only two yards on the play, and it brings up third and eight. I don't mind that call on the early downs. Give that defense something to think about. You got the inside run between the tackles, and whether it's jet sweeps or a little swing pass, or in that case, a toss, make sure you threaten to the outside. Prescott now on third down. Looking, and the Saints came marching home, and they dropped him. And the defense comes through to back him up ahead of fourth down. Hey, that's not an easy thing to do, Kane. Not against quarterbacks in the red zone offenses in this league, but what a tremendous effort to not only get the stop, but to end it with gusto in a sack. Now Brandon Aubrey will try to knock it through for the Cowboys. This a 39-yarder. And it is good. No problems there on the shorter attempt. And that'll get him back to 11. You always feel like you leave a few points on the field when you kick it from here. But they don't wind up empty-handed on the drive. And the kicker well, he gets to pad his stats a little bit with a high percentage make. Aubrey now to kick this one away. This one's fielded at the four-yard line. This return makes it up to the 25. Drive starts out with a first and ten. On the shotgun, Carr. It's caught right side by Johnson. And he'll get it out to the 34 before he's tracked down. Small pass, big result. This dude is just a juggernaut with the football. And once he gets rolling, it gets tougher and tougher and tougher to stop him and claim add-on with those yards. After a good pickup, they're set up with second and short. Just one quarter remaining in this one. This one not out of reach quite yet, but it is a two-score game to begin the four. After a good pickup, they're set up with second and short. From the 34, rifles it and it's caught. And he's tackled with the first down yardage. Kate, one thing I learned from the late great Mike Leach is yeah, the system was called air raid. But it wasn't just attacking downfield. His philosophy, and it played out right there, is you have to attack every inch of the field, both vertically and horizontally, without routes or in routes, just like that. Carr with it on first. Quick hitter complete. 
And he has it up towards midfield before he's taken down at the 47. Second and three now. From the 47. He's got it to him yet again. That is caught. And he'll have it down to the 44-yard line. It's a pickup of nine yards. And that's good for a New Orleans first down. Working out of the gun, it's caught. Defender arrives right as the ball does, and the hit knocks it free, incomplete. As a defense, you got to see the pass. you got to time up your hit, and you got to jar that ball loose. Not a lot of offensive players are hanging on to that one through a well-placed hit. Couldn't connect on first, it's second down. Back to the air, caught. He's got Shaheed. And he's going to be brought down at the 35-yard line. As quarterback, when you have an out route versus man coverage, you're just hoping and just praying your offensive guy could turn the hips of that defender. And once you see that, you've got to cut it loose and let it go, just as they did right there. Looking to throw on third and one. I think if you look up in phase in the defensive encyclopedia, that is a picture perfect form of it. He was all over him in coverage, really forcing the incompletion. On fourth down, out comes the Saints field goal team and Blake Groupie. He was good on his first kick, gonna need to hit this one well to go two for two. And that one is not where he needed it to be. It is off and no good. And the game stays at 11. Really, Kate, that miss doesn't change a whole lot about the game management here. The only thing it does is provide a bit more momentum for the offense running out in need of two quick scores. Another drive coming up for this Dallas offensive unit. And this game might be going better if he could have some more time just to work back there. This pass rush has been all over them, really keeps taking this offense out of any grooves that they've managed to get into. Okay, I like to say in life there's energy givers and there's energy vampires. Yeah. And for this defense, these sacks right here, they're such energy givers. And, man, it's like a vampire sucking the juice out of an offense. Yeah, I love that. The Cowboys have it in great field position as they come up to the line first and ten. Carry here for Elliott. And he'll cross the 50 and start pushing onto the opposing side of the field. Give him nine yards. He almost moved the chains there. It's going to be second and one. That does not show up on any explosive stat sheet. But let me tell you, Kate, that's the real deal right there. You run for that kind of yardage consistently in the NFL, you do set yourself up for success. Prescott here from the gun. Got the land and it's complete. And this one's worked down to the 33 before being stopped. 16 yards on the play. And it'll be first down, Dallas. First down, here's Dak. Brought in by Elliott. And they bring him down after the play reaches the 26. These intermediate gains, that's the wheelhouse for these two to connect on. Start the series off well. And it sure keeps the defense on its toes in case they try to load up and just simply cover the receivers. Second and three now. Working out of the gun, it's Prescott. Ferguson there to bring it in. The end result there, 15 yards and a first. You'll often hear it said, in my life experience, it's true. The NFL is a game of matchups, so much more than any level. And these tight ends, we see it time and again, are such a matchup nightmare down the field. And 
And they've got themselves another first and ten. Working inside the red zone. by the defense. The only way to get bigger is if he somehow returned it 100 plus yards for six the other way. But what a gigantic swing of emotion. The visitors returning their offense in this running back to the field. They're up by two scores, Brock, but we've got some time left, so they still need to mount a drive here. They're out and set. First and ten. Car here from the gun. He's going to loft one deep to the left. That's grabbed inside the 30. And he does quite a bit of damage before they finally take him down. The analytics are pretty clear. It's hard to move the ball in this league with short little dinks and dunks. You've got to get the explosive chunk. You've got to get the big play. And that throw to the outside, that gets the job done. So a massive gain. And all of a sudden, we've got first and 10 inside the red zone. From the red zone now. We had it for a moment, but a great defensive play to jar it loose. Incomplete. See the pass, time up your hit, and jar that ball loose. Not a lot of players are hanging on to a well-placed hit like that one. So after the incompletion, here comes the second down call. Camara gets it. And they make the stop, but a lot closer to the end zone now. He got it to the 11. A solid eight-yard gain there, and now they're going to have third and two. When you don't have great success on first down, Kate, it's a little bit like a hitter in baseball falling behind in the count. And all you want to do as a hitter is get back to a fighting chance. Give yourself a better count. That play, well, does the same here. Now a much more manageable and opportune third down situation. Throw it over the middle, but it's incomplete. Defense doubled him, knowing that was where the pass was likely headed. A bit surprising, quarterback still threw in that direction with how well that defense had that play covered. So the Saints send out Blake Groupie for the try. High percentage look for him here from the left hash. And it is good. No problems there on the shorter attempt. And that extends their lead to 14. Those three points could go a long way to securing this W. Makes it a lot more comfortable knowing the other side's got to score a couple touchdowns now. A touchdown to field goal's not going to get it done anymore. is the Saints kickoff team to tee it up and send it away. Return coming from the 14. And an excellent return here sets them up almost at midfield. The Cowboys offense headed out there. They are coming off their first interception of the game. This drive now a chance to rebuild some confidence. When you get contributions like that out of your kickoff returner, it is such a boost to an offense. This is about showing no fear, hitting the lane hard, a determined run back, and setting your offense up with great field position. The Cowboys have it in great field position as they come up to the line, first and 10. Trying to shake off the interception, he's looking to throw. Tight end reels in the shallow throw, and he'll have it down to the 44-yard line. You put up the combine times of tight ends running a 40-yard dash, and they certainly don't run as fast as the safeties or the corners in this league. But when you get them going in the right direction and you get them dragging across the field like that, well, they can still do their damage. From the 44 here on second down. Pass complete to his back. 
And they get there to take him down right around the 41. Three yards there and enough to move the chains. It's one thing as a running back to move those chains on the ground. Well, that's what you get paid for. You want to get paid a little bit more? Move those chains as a receiver as he just did. First and 10, Prescott. And not a great choice on first down. It's incomplete, nearly intercepted, actually. So second down coming up. You feeling lucky? Well, do you? Well, he should because the quarterback got away with one right there. That was an easy pick dropped by the defense. No dice on that prior pass. Here's second down. Another throw for Prescott. That one is incomplete. Couldn't hang on through the contact. Tough one to retain through that hit. That's going to leave him with a tough third and long. Well, that was almost one of those nice chunk plays you like to see in the NFL, Kate, before he was able to recover and provide the hit and ultimately dislodge the football. You like to see that physical edge and scrappiness to contest any kind of shot plays down the field. Complete beyond the marker. And they catch up to him, but not until he's got a huge gain and a first down. They strike for 23 yards. And that's good for a Cowboys first down. Wow, certainly found the weak spot in the coverage with that catch. Really goes to show. They trust every single player, receiver, running back, in that case, tight end, to be a playmaker in this offense. The drive picks up here, first and 10. Deck throwing again. An alert play defensively there. He got a hand on it to tip it away. That makes it second down. Oh, look at those savvy linebackers. They're just right in the middle of everything, aren't they, Kate? And it seems like at times, they are the quickest reactions as well. He needed a quick one right there to get a finger on the throw and change its direction. Couldn't connect on first. It's second down. They give him out to Zeke. And he's got a decent game before being brought down. Here's five on that play. They need five more now on third down. That run's not going to turn many heads, but at the end of the year, I promise you, if you average over five yards a run, you can be a pro bowler. Here they come. This is third and five. From the gun is Prescott. This one's caught. And he has it down to the eight-yard line on the play. All you can do is shake your head sometimes. Sure, the pass play works, but they come up just an inch or two short for the first down. Moving quickly, trying to get set again. Desperation time on fourth down. And it's going to be incomplete. Couldn't connect to extend the drive. And that might just do it for Brock as they turn it over on downs here in the fourth. New Orleans back on offense and ready to go now. And you can see in these clips quite an extensive highlight reel he's put together in what is a four-touchdown game for him already. Yeah, I think it's safe to say this guy's in the zone. I know in hoops, sometimes shooters say that hoop looks and that basket looks enormous. Right? I know on a golf course, you're thinking, man, everything is a birdie. For this guy today, four touchdowns on the ledger. He's made it look easy. They'll get this drive started. First and ten. They're going to start on the ground with Kamara. And he's brought down for a loss. Well, once we saw them on a collision course with one another, we know how inertia works. The bigger man, he wins. All right, here we go. Second down. Good yardage there with a new set of downs to boot. You know, coach gets in that QB's headset, probably told his offense and his QB, listen, I don't want to see a third down on this possession. Or something kind of like that. Whatever version he told him, it worked. We've reached the two-minute warning from Dallas. Saints feeling good with a 14-point advantage. All set up now for first and ten. 
motioning one of the tight ends. First down, and they go right back to him. And he's going to be brought down up at the 28-yard line. Now just four seconds after our two-minute warning, we've got another pause. Timeout taken by the defense. Halfway to the marker. It's second and five. here just 152 remaining the defense burns a timeout all plays on the table here for third and three they stay on the ground with Camaro and he'll get taken down after advancing this to the 37. Final time out taken by the Cowboys. And they are quite frustrated having to call that after giving up the first. Victory formation here. Looks like they're going to take a knee on first down. And he's going to take a knee. There's still some time to bleed off the clock, but the important factor is that the defense is helpless to stop them. You could just run that clock down as far as you're able and take off every single second. Second down, probably going to see him kneel it again here. Give on second to Camara. And he finds him enough room to get it up to the 42-yard line. Give him six yards on the run, so it's going to be third and five. You make that call to just give yourself a fighting chance on third down, Kate. Take at least a little bite of the big meal between them and the first down marker. And that, that should make this upcoming call a little less daunting. And they'll kneel this down. Nothing left to do now, Kate, but celebrate on one side and watch on hopelessly from the other. What a hard-fought effort to get to this spot, and now you can enjoy the victory. Here comes the Saints punting unit. And thankfully, he hasn't been needed until the final quarter. And he doesn't put much height or distance on that one. And they bring him down to put a stop to that return. So this will win on the road for the Saints. Well, as they celebrate to the booze of the home crowd, I'm sure you're having flashbacks, buddy. It's got to be music to their ears hearing those fans voice their displeasure. It is so sweet, Kate, when you win on the road for a couple reasons. Yeah, yeah I, I do remember. I, I remember silencing those road crowds. There's no better feeling than to hear, you know, those boos and those cheers and all that noise just silenced because you beat them in their building. You know the other great sound? <laughs> the plane ride home. Those are some of the greatest memories you have to celebrate that road victory and a whole road trip home to take it all in. So for Brock Heward, our incredible crew, everybody here at EA Sports, I'm Kate Scott signing off. We'll see you next time.